An idiot called Chris Broussard of Fox Sports crossed the line, so I had to make a video addressing the completely ignorant take about the diverse, underappreciated city of Toronto and its championship winning organization. Great city, but Twine, you know it's not America and you feel it. When you're there, I'm telling you, especially as an African American, it's a different situation than African Americans are used to being in. All I've talked to people in that organization pre Ujiri about can they keep African American superstars there? What an incredibly odd and frankly ignorant statement from a quote unquote basketball expert who gets paid millions to go on national television in front of of the entire world in about every country on the planet. For Chris to say something so obviously xenophobic just goes to show you how the mainstream sports media continues to disrespect Toronto being a legitimate force in the NBA. The narrative about their 2019 championship run has been completely written off with false narratives based around how Toronto got away with one after Golden State lost Klay Thompson and Kevin Durant. What you've almost definitely forgotten about because of those narratives dismissing Toronto's title is that before Thompson or Durant went down permanently, the Raptors nearly had a gentleman sweep of the Warriors' big three. But at the end of the day, it's a stone-cold game that sees the last team standing both mentally and physically come out on top. The Raptors played who were in front of them and stole a ring from the Warriors' dynasty, but with the majority of fans and media frankly spewing garbage using talking points based around why Toronto didn't deserve their 2019 World Championship ring, the franchise didn't get the respect it deserved. That summer, Kawhi took about two weeks to decide he was getting the chip and dipping back to his hometown of LA to play for the Clippers. But that didn't shake up the spirits of President Masai Ujiri, who quickly built the roster back up with trade acquisitions of Gary Trent Jr. and also Precious Achua in the Kyle Lowry sign and trade. Also in 2021, Masai drafted the Rookie of the Year Scotty Barnes, and young veterans in Pascal Siakam, Fred Van Vliet, and OG Ananobi all improved their games. Figures like Chris Broussard, who work in the US media, which is of course competing with the Canadian media, of course are going to hate Kevin Durant being traded to the Raptors, but here's why the disrespect to the Raptors and the city of Toronto from the stooge Chris Broussard comes off as jealous and demeaning. Given Kevin Durant was limited to just 12 minutes for the entire finals back in 2019, very few have given too much respect to the Raptors for winning that series against the Warriors and ultimately the title that year. Seemingly everyone outside of Toronto claimed the Raps got lucky and won solely because the Warriors were missing both Kevin Durant and Klay Thompson. The excuse of KD being out is valid, but Klay Thompson played 40 minutes in games 1 through 5 of those finals with the now looking to be untouchable big three of Curry, Thompson, and Green all suiting up as Toronto came five minutes from closing out the 2019 NBA Finals in five games. It's probably slipped your mind based off all the narratives that have been told, but the Raptors had a 3-1 to series lead and led for most of game five back in Toronto before the Splash Bros came through down the stretch and forced another game in Oakland. Whether Klay Thompson tore his ACL in Game 6 or not, the Raptors were winning the championship, but the complete opposite picture has been painted by the majority of casual NBA fans and, of course, the mainstream media. To be clear, I'm not discrediting how generationally great the Dubs dynasty has been. That's been proven with their four championship trophies. All I'm saying is, the storybook Raptors from three years ago, who came up short year after the other in the LeBron James era, were led by the greatest player of all time for three months in Kawhi, and had the perfect complementary pieces around the claw after trading a franchise player in DeRozan for Leonard to finally go the distance, play into June, and get the job done. Kawhi had every right to go home, but despite taking his sweet time to make a decision about leaving Toronto, that didn't stop media members like Chris Broussard from painting the picture that Toronto is a place that no American players enjoy competing in. We're going to get to the response from members of the NBA family regarding Broussard's xenophobic take, in my opinion, on Fox Sports. But Kawhi Leonard clearly showed a desire to compete in Toronto when he was here. Five-time All-Star DeMar DeRozan was absolutely in love with the city of Toronto. Same thing goes for his longtime running mate and Raptor GOAT, Kyle Lowry. Breakups like with Vince Carter, Tracy McGrady, or Chris Bosh 
have been overshadowed in recent years by players, even stars, re-signing or agreeing to join in the blink of an eye. I think of the great sixth man, Lou Williams, agreeing to come play here. Again, even though he didn't re-sign here, I think of an all-time great two-way player in Kawhi Leonard embracing the city and franchise's culture to the utmost extent. Most recently, Masai Ujiri stole a crucial 3 and D contributor to the Warriors championship run in Otto Porter Jr., a man who in his time in Washington was the number three scoring option next to John Wall and Bradley Beal. OPJ's length on the perimeter defensively, plus extra bit of scoring and marksmanship on the other side, should be a massive factor for Toronto in 2023. Then there's the future of the organization, the young king of the north, Scotty Barnes, whose progression in year two is going to be interesting to watch. From his post-up game to his playmaking and defense, with his 7'2 wingspan, determination, and instincts, the reigning ROI has every weapon in his bag to develop into a perennial all-star. Scariest part if you're a conference or division rival is how far certain elements of his game, like his off-the-dribble shot creation and deep-range shooting, can progress in the coming years. But it's crucial Barnes keeps his head on straight and in the gym, because those areas do have a long way to go. In my opinion, he's going to have a Hall of Fame career, but the question is, will he be on the caliber of Scottie Pippen or Giannis Adetokounmpo? If it's the latter, Toronto's going to be a perennial contender for the next decade. More intimidatingly, what if Barnes becomes Giannis with a deep range shot? That's easier said than done if you're Scott, but with his skill set and stature, it's not totally out of the realm of possibility. But here's what former Raptor Rondé Hollis Jefferson had to say about Chris Broussard's statement. Quote, yeah, this is a stretch. Canadians love you like you grew up there. He's tripping. Meanwhile, here was former 17-year NBA veteran Richard Jefferson on Broussard's comments about the six. Um, I just want to go on record here and say as a media member and as a player for 17 years, Toronto is one of the greatest cities I've ever been to. It is one of the most beautiful cities. The people, the energy, the food, everyone is so nice. We always call it like the nice New York and players love going to New York. Uh, and I'm gonna say this as an African-American, player when you look at a place like toronto and you're like there's so many different types of people here and it seems like there is a positive energy everywhere you go uh i'm gonna say that that is false i have not talked to chris about this but i'm gonna come to the defense of toronto and say toronto like you you guys you guys are all right in my book and all the internet sleuths out there they're gonna pop up and when you guys start seeing hey richard jefferson has always said toronto is one of the top five cities in in, in the nba i said toronto miami new york la and then for me personally i say phoenix so um that for me is so false not true um not in my experience i've never heard a player say anything about that in my entire 20 plus years involved in the nba I want to know in your opinion, what was your response to Broussard's comments when you saw them? Best answer earns next video shout out. Top 3 commenters by September 21st earn a free shoe, the top 5 earn a free jersey. Two shout outs next video, appreciate every take, DFlow signing off.